Now, I know more than anyone that the Pico 4 store had a rocky launch, launching a VR store in 2022 with just over 200 unoptimized ports that straight up cost way more than other game libraries was always going to set them up for critique. But after playing my Pico every day this year, I've noticed them do a pretty good job at turning this around. Games are slowly being updated, we're actually seeing some decent sales bringing the price down, and with full open XR support, more and more games are getting ported and we even have a few exclusives. So in this video, we're going to count down the best standalone Pico games available right now, broken down by a genre so you can jump around in the timestamps below. First up we have shooting games and I would say this was by far their weakest category up until about a month ago and now might just be one of their best. The first game on the list is the Pico exclusive called Rampage VR and holy shit what a banger. Imagine you could play Borderlands in VR and that's basically what we have here. It has 35 really fun and engaging weapons, four different champions with unique abilities, boss fights, shiny loot and upgrades and a fully fledged talent system. It even has multiplayer with matchmaking and looks like we're going to have seasonal rewards which is just adds to the replayability. My only complaint about this game is no one really knows it exists so it's really hard to find players with the matchmaking system. Please buy this game and add it. The Pico was definitely missing a good online competitive tactical shooter but we got that last month with Breaches. So this is like a cross between Counter-Strike and Rainbow Six and it's honestly just a bunch of fun. It's your classic bomb defusal with a bunch of different gadgets to either defend or attack the map but there is very quick kill time so if you're not very good then you might spend a whole lot of time dead and a whole lot of time spectating. If you want to ditch the guns and pick up a bow then In Death Unchained could be the game for you. It has some of the best bow mechanics in any VR game I've played so far. With its punishing roguelike gameplay I haven't had the patience or the skill to progress super far in the campaign but they also have a tower defense mode called Siege of Heaven. This is my preferred way to play and each game lasts about 15 minutes where waves of baddies will spawn and run towards the gate. You need to take them out before they get there. And finally, after the fall is like Left 4 Dead but in VR, it's an online co-op shooter where once again you can team up in groups of four to take on various zombies in a post-apocalyptic world. Completing these missions will reward you with new guns and currency which you can use to upgrade your arsenal and take on even harder levels. Free to play and I have been playing a bunch of free to play games on the Pico and honestly compared to what Quest users have, they pretty much all suck except for a couple. First up we have a Beat Saber clone called Mutrix. I like this game because we don't have Beat Saber so it's nice to get something kind of close. You can also mod it with Beat Saber map packs so they're not even pretending not to be a Beat Saber clone. I will say this game is quite rough around the edges, there's an incredibly weird freemium model where you have to use gems to unlock songs, there's some sort of 30 day pass for unlimited songs so my advice is just stick to the free ones and maybe install some custom songs. For the songs I have played something about the gameplay just feels slightly off like they're all map the same and even on expert it's not very hard it just feels like you're overreaching for the, the corner blocks. The graphics are pretty bad and the sound effects of chopping blocks is just weird but hey it's free. Blast On on the other hand and if you've seen my other guides then you'll know how much I love this 1v1 dueling shooter. I think it's a fantastic even for a paid game but it's completely free and what happens is you're going to be bound to a small arena where different guns and weapons will be spawning around you. You have to pick these up and shoot your opponent all while they're trying to do exactly the same thing to you. The bullets, arrows and various projectiles will be coming at you in slow motion which results you in doing a lot of sidestepping, squatting, lunging, which is just an absolute blast to play. They have competitive ranks and seasons to climb with different guns and modifications to unlock, so there's plenty of replayability, all while getting a lower body workout in. Rhythm and Fitness. Now, this is by far where I spend the majority of my time, and I think where the Pico probably shines the most. On release, we saw this was heavily marketed on its inbuilt fitness and calorie tracker, and because it's a standalone headset where you don't have to be tied up with cables, it just excels in this area. While we might not have access to the two heavy hitters, which are Beat Saber and Supernatural, we have access to basically everything else. So Audio Trip is my favorite rhythm dance game, where you use your body and controllers to move along to the beat of music, all while dodging obstacles and collecting orbs. The game features a variety of songs and difficulty levels allowing players to customize their experience based on their own fitness level. What I like most about Audio Trip is out of the box these have some of the best map songs making you feel like you're actually dancing. They also have the license to well-known pop songs like Lady Gaga and Psy and they even have cardio mode if you want to take it to the next level. Pistol Whip is the cyberpunk themed John Wick rail shooter. There's heaps of different weapons and loadouts you can choose from but the premise is basically to shoot things and don't get shot. If you are focusing on fitness one thing I will say that is that the better you get the easier it gets so you might want to consider ditching the guns entirely by picking up brawler mode or you can use some of the other modifications like scavenger or vengeance with the whole idea of increasing the amount of projectiles coming at you so that means you're going to spend more time dodging and it's going to be more of a lower body workout. Now they also have custom songs and maps coming out later this month. Ragnarok which is that little cartoon viking drum simulator and I can't quite put my finger on it but for some reason I just keep coming back to this game. Here you essentially take on the role of a viking captain drumming your way to victory. 
It's kind of like Guitar Hero where you have four drums in front of you and you need to bash the runes at the correct time. Doing so will power up your hammer and you can smash the gong to the side of you which will let your team out with a cheer and a small burst of speed which just feels Fantastic. I think part of the reason I like this so much is just because of the music genre. It's more on the rock and heavy metal, so if you're that way inclined, I think you'll really like it too. And finally from this category, we have Les Mills Body Combat. Now Les Mills have been incredibly successful outside of VR with their in-person and online workouts. They have reached thousands worldwide and now they have repurposed their training and expertise into a VR environment. You get access to two really good coaches with thick Kiwi accents and it has all of the good stuff like daily goals, fitness trackers, and leaderboards. And it's my preferred method to get a workout in when I'm traveling for work. This competes very closely with Supernatural and FitXR, but because there's no subscription with Les Mills Body Combat, I think it blows them out of the water. In our next category, we have sports games, and why not blur the lines between sports and rhythms with our first game, X Fighter. X Fighter is a brand new mixed reality boxing game that takes advantage of Pico's full color pass through in such a fun and refreshing way. Now the reason it's a blend between boxing and rhythm is because you get more points for striking in time with music. But essentially you pick a song of your choice and cyborgs will spawn around your living room where you have to block their attacks and counter with your own. Your pets will also thank you because there's less chance of you stepping on them. I really love the mixed reality and the ability to upload your own mp3s but it is still very much an early access. I wish it felt more like a natural spa rather than just block counter block counter and while they do kind of move around you, once you've done the same song one or twice you, you kind of know how it works. My hope is that Thrill of the Fight 2 learns from this mixed reality and incorporates it into that game. And speaking on that note, if you are looking for more of a boxing boxing game, then Creed will be best for you. Unfortunately, we don't have access to Thrill of the Fight, but Creed has a decent single player mode as you climb through the rank of fights. They also have training simulators and you can play endurance mode where the fights are much longer. One of the best things about Creed is on other platforms. You can play in multiplayer, but unfortunately we don't get that in the Pico version just yet. So I bring my rating down slightly. Then we have Walkabout Mini Golf, which is one of the most loved VR sports games of all time on the Quest headset. And here you get transported to stunning locations around the world to play mini golf. There's a variety of courses to choose from and you can choose to either play solo, versus yourself, or versus friends with multiplayer. The game boasts very realistic physics and challenging hazards that will make it a true test of skill. Similar to Creed, this one is often a version or two behind, but I still think even the base game is so good it's worth picking up. And finally we have All-in-One Sports. This is like Wii Sports but for VR. It's cool because there's a variety of different sports you can choose from, but kind of sucks because it doesn't really excel at any of them. It's still a great way to get in and try what different sports have to offer in VR. And if you like the boxing, for example, you could pick up Creed, or if you like the table tennis, then you could consider 11 table tennis. In the final category, before special mentions, we have puzzle and casual games. This is by far where I have the least experience, but I can talk through a few that I did enjoy on the Pico. Down the rabbit hole is basically Alice in Wonderland. Here you follow a young girl named Alice in search of her lost pet, Patches. The game is designed as a puzzle game, and as you progress through the story, you interact with some pretty funny characters, and to be honest, it did make me laugh out loud a few times. It has a pretty unique art style, and is worthwhile, I think, to experience if you do like puzzle games with a twist. If this is your first VR device, then an oldie but a goodie is Moss, and it's a similar sort of gameplay to Down the Rabbit Hole, except there's a little bit more combat involved, and you'll be following the adventures of a young mouse named Quill. So the game's unique feature here is that you take on the presence of a mysterious being known as the reader and you must help Quill navigate through various puzzles and challenges. So even though it's over five years old, the graphics are so good they hold up today and the soundtrack adds to the immersion. There's even a sequel, so if you really like it, you can continue. But please don't let my preferences dissuade you. If this is the primary reason you play VR, then the Pico Store has some fantastic options. In the final category, we have Richie's Plank Experience, which in my opinion is the best experience to share with someone that has never used VR before. So if you plan on going to friend's house or having inviting family over, I would highly recommend picking up this title. Now, if you do plan on playing it by yourself, please do not buy this because you would get five to 10 minutes top and then never use it again. But the concept of it is very, very simple. Essentially, you enter a lift, take the lift to the top story, and then you have to walk out on a virtual plank. And it's just crazy to see people, how they respond, you know, even though you know it's not real, how your brain thinks it's real. This is gonna sound weird, and that's because it is weird, but one of my favorite things to do is strap a VR headset to a 50-year-old dude and watch them not be able to walk out. It's just funny. The final special mention is virtual desktop because no standalone gaming headset list would be complete without virtual desktop. This essentially allows you to connect to your PC and play PC VR games, obviously massively adding to the number of games you can play, and then you can get access to titles like Half-Life Alex. 
But that is all. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.